Hi there, Victor Pro speaking to you, anarchist artist. Okay, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, some fun things and uh, regarding um, a free, stateless society and propaganda. Now, um, ever since I've, uh, to use religious terminology, converted to anarchism from being a minarchist, small government advocate. Um, I've come across every type of uh, heated discussion and uh, objection that uh, you can imagine in the face of uh, such a controversial stance, right? Eh, pretty sad state of affairs that freedom and uh, reason can be considered uh, controversial, but um, that's the nature of the society that we're living in. But anyway, we've come across all types of objections uh, from, uh, from people. Some of them are pretty intelligent objections that get you thinking. Other ones are just just embarrassing, just just embarrassing, when you hear some of the objections uh, coming from people, and to and to know that that they're a part of the human race, that they share the uh, that they're the, the same species as you. This is like uh, it, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. Some of the objections that we do come across, and you you just have to dismiss the uh, the ultra stupid ones out of hand. Um, but uh, some of them are pretty uh, challenging, and and uh, and uh, you know do get you thinking. But only in terms of uh, the practical applications of a free society. Uh, the uh, there, I, I've never thrown it into any type of inquiry or doubt when it comes to the moral position of the anarchist. Not the moral question whatsoever. Whatsoever. Now, there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever. There's not even any doubt in the practical application of a free society. Uh, but it just gets me curious in the sense of the logistics of the, uh, of the, of the problems. You know, for example... Uh, you know, a stateless society, what about the roads? Uh, the roads are already here, what about repairs? Uh, or what about uh, building new roads? Um, in, in terms of, like, who's going to be contra contracted for that? How is there, is there going to be competitive roads? Is going to be certain sections where private ownership of uh, roads will clash with other uh, individuals who have their own roads, and how is the infrastructure going to work? And Yeah, the, you know, the, the, um, it's, it's a nice intellectual game to try to figure all that out, but of course, you have to keep in mind at the same time, too, there is such a thing as division of labor and, this, and specialization and spontaneous order. So th there's a lot of things that, unless you're otherwise curious and intellectually engaged in these uh, type of uh, practical questions, uh, then go ahead and pursue it and figure it out and contribute and make uh, suggestions and study it and things like that, study the past as to what was done. And, uh, but otherwise, you know, it shouldn't uh, cast any doubt, uh, you know, in, in regards to having a free society. You don't have to answer all of these questions to, uh, to make your case for a free society. And, uh, you know, so a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, dyed-in-the-wool uh, uh, status a lot of intellectual shysters, they will toss out these uh, ready-made conundrums of, uh, of, uh, of a free society and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and uh, economics at you, knowing that you can't answer these questions. <laughs> and therefore, they congratulate themselves for having uh, you know, won the case, uh, that your, your uh, free anarchist uh, society, your stateless society, is just a pipe dream, it's impractical, and uh, just uh, downright uh, and moral. So, when uh, when you're level with these type of uh, criticisms, you know you really have to, uh, you know, really got to ask the question. Um, you're met with the challenge of when you say that we don't need a government, okay? We just don't need it at all, at all. I mean, this this is the extremism that I am advocating and espousing. Okay, and I have no doubts whatsoever these days about the necessity of uh, abolishing this evil institution. Okay, not in abolishing in the sense of uh, violent revolution or anything like that, because I don't advocate violence, and I not even like a direct uh, abolition, because like uh, like slavery. I don't see that. I see it as I I agree with Stefan Molyneux that it is a multi general process. The dyed in the wool indoctrinated uh, propagandized puppets who are around my age or older or even uh, younger they're just gonna have to die off <laughs> okay and we need a uh, these ideas have to spread and uh, and the best uh, target place for that is uh, is the young okay it is a multi-general multi multi-generation multi process it's not going to be my age 
and it's uh, certainly not going to be in, uh, in our children's uh, uh, lifetime or their children. But I'm not casting any, uh, uh, you know, I'm not looking into a crystal ball to read the future. You know, it's just a, uh, a, a basic, uh, you know, just a, a basic understanding of where we are intellectually at the current, uh, at the current moment in time. And uh, the, uh, the crossroads are, the, are there, they're shifting, the paradigm is uh, going under attack. But, uh, but I, we're not going to see a free society in our lifetime. Now, in making the claim that we don't need a, um, society, uh, a society with the government, okay, you have to ask the question, well, what it, why is the government uh, regarded as so necessary? Like, uh, what purpose is it serving? Why? Why have this institution? Uh, you know, if we take away this institution and everything that they're offering, is it going to evaporate and nothing's going to replace it? There will be no people... Um, offering services, there will be no people uh, producing, there will be no conflict uh, conflict resolution unless we have a government. I mean, what what is being proposed here from the uh, the uh, from the advocates for statism? What are, what are these? Why are they so dyed in the wool? Why are they so committed that uh, that we're crazy and insane and a lunatic fringe, and uh, that they we, that we just don't get it, we just don't see it? You know, what are they saying that we absolutely need a government for? Well, let's go down the list and. And, um, and examine uh, some of the reasons that uh, could be given as to why we need a government, okay? Well, uh, let's take the issue of uh, theft and uh, robbery, okay? There's people out there, they will uh, break into your home and steal stuff and rip you off, and a lot of people are, there's quite a few people that are thieves and uh, aren't entirely honest. I don't think they comprise the majority of human beings, it's hardly the case. A small uh, handful of people compared to the po size of a given population in a certain geographical area called the country that uh, will commit theft. What are we going to do about that? Well, that's where the government comes in. This is the uh, this is the proposed solution to a problem that's rather finite and uh, minuscule by comparison to the to the uh, general honesty of the population at hand, or simply working for a living. You don't think about ripping people off or who are not doing that, okay? Who simply are not doing that because they are not interested and it goes against their moral fibers. So you just don't have that. But what are we going to do for those people that do? Well, we need a, a small cadre of human, uh, human beings called a government that's going to impose overwhelming uh, military uh, police force and uh, have a Federal Reserve uh, that uh, prints money to, uh, to take care of this, uh, this problem. I mean, so so that, that, that's the, uh, that's the uh, solution being proposed to, to a problem. Okay, so um, uh, an institution that, uh, that plunders the wealth of productive human beings. So we need an agency that uh, commits an act of robbery and theft to uh, protect us from robbery and theft. Okay, so you get the logic here, right? Oh, this is the only type of argument that can be advanced by people who are victims of uh, school indoctrination, okay, where their reasoning and logic skills have been so seriously hampered that they can't see the obvious, obvious contradiction that, uh, that is uh, glaring them in the face, glaring them in the face. Fifty percent of your income and property taxes, are going. The, the government is going to impose property taxes and in taxes in general, uh, to uh, to protect your property, to protect your property, okay, uh, and to uh, to protect you from people who would commit theft, okay. This does this make any sense? Okay, now moving along. What about uh, murder? Hmm, murder. Okay, there are people in the world who will take your life. Okay, we and uh, you know dangerous. Social paths, okay, and random uh, serial killings. That's a very small uh, minority of people, very small given the popu population. I think that's something that could be uh, handled in a free society that uh, recognizes this, uh, this as a problem and would set about to, to uh, correct it in a much more effective way than the government is doing right now. Okay, so murder. Okay, so we need a government to uh, protect us from those uh, would-be murderers that uh, characterizes, uh, you know, societies. Okay, really? Really? This is what you're going to go with as an argument for proposing that we need a government murder. Completely bypassing the fact that the, uh, that the government itself is one of the greatest mass homicidal 
uh, genocidal uh, murderers on the face of the planet. This blood-soaked, uh, evil Le Leviathan institution has uh, accounts for more murders than any private citizen. I, I don't care if you gather all the private citizens from every country in the world that has committed the act of killing another human being, a private citizen who's killed another human being the world over in any country at any time. Let's match up the statistics and just see how that fares to uh, the murders and atrocities that have been committed by governments. And in this case, I'm just not talking about the American government. I am talking about government as a concept, a concept, as a construct, okay, as an institution, no matter where that institution is in the world. Okay, so it, 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 the argument is just so freaking ridiculous on its face. You know, you, you, do, you don't even know how to process these type of objections when they come from people, that they can't see the blood that's in their own backyard, okay? They, they, these are people who are seriously in, indoctrinated and propagandized, and they're accusing the anarchists of being uh, drinking the Kool-Aid and being a propagandized puppet. Okay, there's a little thing in the psychology, advanced by Freud, I think, called uh, projection. You know what projection is, right? That's when you accuse... Uh, somebody else, your uh, opponent, let's say, in a philosophical battle, of the very things that you're guilty of. So when you're encountering somebody who says, hey, you know, you're just, uh, uh, you drank the Kool-Aid, you're full of propaganda, okay, you, you know that's coming from a person who's suffering those afflictions, okay, especially when it's repeated, repeated often. Okay, so and then another thing that we have here is uh, counterfeiting and fraud. I mean, there are people who will defraud you and, uh, and uh, engage in counterfeiting of some type. Alrighty then, <laughs> counterfeiting and fraud. Okay, what institution comes to mind where it's the largest counterfeiting racket the world has ever seen? Ever. And that's the Federal Reserve. I mean, all governments are, are guilty of this, of course, so, but like, look at the U.S. government. It's spiraling out, spiraling out of control. I mean, it's fucking insane that people will, especially in this day and age, the people who will advance that as uh, as to why we need a government is just, you know, protect us from uh, uh, fraud and counterfeiting? I mean, are you fucking serious? The people can't see this? And, you know, and another thing, too, another thing that will be advanced to you is, like, well, what about, uh, you know, what about the education of our children? You know, we, that's why we need a government, you know, the, the education of our children. Okay, how's that working out, practically? I mean, you're all about practicality, right? Forget about the moral. You're all about practicality. How's that working out? Hmm? How's that working out? Is your, the, uh, if you look at the facts, just the facts, the practical facts, let's be practical. Let's look at the facts. Do you know what, uh, what the, uh, the stats are on the illiteracy rates? Does, are you aware of that? Do, do, does anybody check into these things to find out what's going on? Does anybody, is the government succeeding in educating children? I don't see that. So I don't, uh, this uh, proposed solution to the issue of uh, educating the children, uh, I don't see as working out. In fact, if you, uh, e even though the uh, private schools are heavily regulated and are under the crust of uh, government bureaucracy, uh, why don't you look at the stats as to what the illiteracy rates are there? That might be a good idea, right? So, um, yeah, you know, and another thing, too, when you actually think of the nature of this institution, this, this, uh, wealth uh, plundering uh, genocidal uh, murderous uh, leviathan called government or the state when you look at the facts of any government or the world over and what they're doing okay and you want to put the care of children under this type of institution uh, I, I know i know that you're driving the uh, the economy into the ground uh, you're, ca you're causing starvation, economic dislocation, economic paralysis, economic collapse, uh, launching wars around the world, uh, killing your own civilians, and uh, we, we know, we can see that you're doing all that things, but please, Mr. Government, educate our children. Yes, that makes a lot of fucking sense. Okay, so that's all I have to say is that um, freedom is not the aberration. It's government that is a cancer. And you know what? You don't temper with cancer. You don't uh, try to minimalize it. You don't write a constitution on the side of it. Okay, you cut the fucking thing out. Victor Pross, anarchist artist. Pop goes the culture.